Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Alex Payton. And I'm Ollie Bridgewood. Coming up this week, we've got a bike fit special where we're going to be discussing all things bike fit related with Jake Yarrington from Precise Performance. Yeah, there's also some new Castelli bib shorts, new Trek Domani, and uh, all usual favourites, including a Bike Vault bike fit special. Right, first up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So last week we asked if you thought tyre inflation tech is going to be a game changer in Paris Bay. Turns out 55% of people said no, don't think it matters at all. But still, quite a lot of people thought it would make a difference. Yeah. However, um, we watched Paris Bay, both the men's and women's yeah. on GCN Plus. Incredible race. Um, but the tech wasn't used. No. Apparently, Team DSM felt that it was too much stress on the riders to have to deal with the new tech and they weren't totally confident with it, they just sort of started using it. So they didn't use it. So we yeah. don't actually know if it, if it would have made a difference. Oh, okay. Fair so enough. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe next year? Yeah. Okay. Right, on to our main talking points. So this week we've got Jake in. Hey Jake, thanks oh, yeah. for joining us. So Jake, you're a bike fit expert. You've got like, what, 10 years experience in the industry. Yeah. You run your own company. You've worked with some of the top teams. You work with some top athletes, para athletes, amateur racers and also recreational riders as well. So. We're going to discuss all things bike fit related, aren't we? Yeah. So to kick us off, what is a bike fit? It's a it's a way of just making a rider more comfortable, more efficient, and just reduce that that injury risk, really. Okay. You know, to them. So. so the whole point of a bike fit is to make people comfortable, I guess. What yeah. else are we trying to achieve? We want them to be able to ride the bike for longer. Yeah. Meet all their goals in the most efficient way. So maybe. In you know, allowing them to use more power that they naturally have in their body and uh, stay away from injury. Okay, injury is pretty important. You don't yeah. want to be like sore, sore knees, sore hips. You, no. don't want, you don't want to be sore when you're riding your bike. So we get asked a lot of questions from the audience about bike fits and like and stuff to do with fitting on bikes. But what are the biggest mistakes in all your career that you see? What are the most common things that people get wrong? Sea height generally is too high. Yeah, they're, you know, you can see from the way that they connect to the saddle. They slide all the way further forward, or they, they're holding their hands way back on the handlebars, and they're rocking their hips side to side. That's like a clear indicator for me always, is having your hips rocking. I always used to have my saddle too high, and it used to make me sit right on the nose of the saddle. I mean, I still sit on the nose of the saddle now, but it was one of the things that I used to struggle with. What about saddle too low, though? Yeah, that's definitely a thing as well, but generally people go too high. Cause gen saddle too low, it feels really restricted. Right. How do you spot if someone's saddle's too low? Looking at their knee extension, looking at their ankle range, um, looking at the, the smoothness of their pedal stroke, you know, can they get over the top of the, of the pedal? Okay. So if we've been saying that um, having a bike fit can make you more efficient, yeah. something that I've heard people say is, oh, I've increased my power for having a bike fit. So can it make you faster? It definitely can make you faster. But can it increase your power? Na the, pa the power you naturally have in your body, yeah. you can use it better. However, it, I can't, we, we can't know bike fitter can give you more watts. You're not going to make me 20 watts more on my FTP? <laughs> no. Oh, it's a bit of a letdown, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, in, <laughs> so in terms of like, we often look at like pro riders yeah. and think that they're infallible and they're like perfect and everyone aspires to be like them, right? Yeah. Are they? In terms of bike fit? In my personal opinion, no. <laughs> I don't think they are. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, not to take away how, how quality this rider is, you know, uh, Van der Poel. He, uh, you look at him, his he's seat height looks way too high. He's right on the nose of the saddle. His ankle's pointing down almost directly, you know, directly to the, t to the floor. And you are just amazed that he hasn't come a, a, across an injury, which potentially could have been his back injury. Had. Well, he's got a bad, he's had a bad back, hasn't yeah. he? So what? So what? What do you think has happened there? So as someone who works with athletes, yeah. and and you know you you fitted a lot of pros, what what's the process by which he's doing that? Because he must have access to the best people. You yeah. know, what you generally find is they want to do they they settle on what works for them, and then they, what they tend to do from that point on is fiddle with it a little bit. And if they're fiddling with it, going two mil higher every four weeks, suddenly you're ten mil higher. You know, and you don't notice that small change because your body's conditioned to it. And also, they're athletes, you know, they're I guess they're top pro of their athletes, game. Like the people that are at the top of their game, 
they think what, what they're doing, what they currently got works for them. So yeah. I guess they're reluctant to change because they might go, well, if I change a load of stuff because you know, someone's come in like yourself and said, oh, maybe we'll try wider handlebars, move the saddle forwards back. They don't want to lose what they think is their like, optimal setup. They yeah. could go, oh, next week I'm going to be pulling rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, without a doubt, if someone was to, to get their hands on Van der Poel and say, right, this is where you're going to eventually find more power and you know feel more comfortable, more stable, more, more efficient, he'd go on that first ride and he'd absolutely hate it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be completely honest because that change would be too much. You'd have yeah. to do it over the course of probably a, a whole winter doing subtle little changes, which obviously isn't always available to do with you know, recreational riders like myself. <laughs> yeah. So are there any other pros which you think stand out for having maybe a little bit of an abnormal setup or something that, that stands out to you really? Again, not to take away how, how good a rider he is, you know. <laughs> You're being too polite. You know. <laughs> we want you to slate everybody. Um, yeah, Geraint Thomas, yeah. you know, he sits right on the nose of the saddle again, you know. Mm. Why is that? Is it because his seat height? Is it because of the setback on the saddle? Is it because his stem's too long? Is it because, you know, his handlebars are too low? There's so many things you can sort of break down on, on top of that, but yeah. whether or not it actually is... Um, I think it's something One I've thing. noticed before about Garen Thomas as yeah. well, and like I think I think it's a carryover from his the immense amount of time he spent as a track pursuiter, yeah. where he are, so. where he was going to have that pursuit position, yeah. and it's almost as if he transferred his pursuit position onto the road bike, yeah. and then it's just that thing of what you're it's saying. It's never like, changed. It isn't broke. Yeah. In his mind, it's not broke. So don't fix it. Yeah. Leave it as it is. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But it doesn't. It is what you've described. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, and with the pros as well, you have to remember is they, their life is riding the bike, being ready for the next next race, and that involves hours of strength training. Yeah, when your body's strong, you can, you can't get away with it because he eventually catches up with you. Maybe what like Van der Poel's found, but you, you end up having an issue where you know the body's just like, oh, I can handle this. You know, fine, I'll get on with it. Yeah. Because it's so strong in that position and so conditioned, spending 30 hours a week, plus maybe every week, yeah. you know, 12 months a year. I guess as soon as you take a, a pro rider out yeah. of their normal position or what their body's used to, that's when you start to risk injury and stuff. Yeah, 100%. And I, I see it day to day in, in when I'm fitting you know, in the studio. It's people have maybe, maybe not themselves put themselves in that position. Maybe it's come from advice, maybe it's come from online, maybe it's come from looking at the pros and they're constantly getting injured, constantly getting hurt, you put them into that right position, you know, maybe not the 130 stem which they want to ride. <laughs> Slam you know, 130 stem. Slam <laughs> negative yeah. 25, you know, maybe it's actually like a, a six degree stem with 20 mil spacer underneath. Yeah. You know, it's something like, oh actually, everything's a lot more comfortable, everything's a lot more contact, um, connected and everything's more natural to what my body can actually do considering I don't stretch or don't yeah. do any strength work. Oh, I so, don't do any. So not just from like the getting injured perspective, like you know, obviously people, yeah. what you're describing, people getting injured on the yeah. bikes because it's not set up properly. Um, are there any handling, bike handling implications? Oh, definitely. For like not ha being properly set up on yeah. your bike. So again, it, it works in two ways. So if the stem is too long, it doesn't. Gen it's not too bad, but your weight might be too unevenly distributed. So you try to bend, go around corners, yeah. and then suddenly you end up thinking, well, you don't know you're losing out on the ability to corner until you're in the right place, if that makes sense. Mm. And likewise, if you have a shorter stem. That's one of the biggest ones I find is where people have just put shorter stems on, but it's an extra large frame or you know, a 62 centimetre frame. You think, mm, okay, maybe you would actually need like a 110 or 120 to yeah. actually make the whole handling of this bike work properly, which means maybe you need a new bike. So talking about um, getting the body into its sort of natural position and yeah. maybe amateur riders copying what they've seen pros do, what do you think on levers being turned in? We discussed this oh, a couple yeah. of weeks back. So and we're seeing lots bars. of pros having narrow bars and then turning their levers in, trying to get aero, get their body as sort of narrow as, as possible. Yeah. What do you make of this? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is it acceptable in some situations? I hate the levers turned in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said yeah. that. I'm glad you said no, that. I don't I, like um, it. I tell a lot of people to, uh, well, don't. I advise them to to not do that because I see people come with it in the trend, and apparently it's more comfortable. You know, they don't want to say the word aero, you know, because mm. they don't want to be that be that person, maybe. But <laughs> you know, um, but you know, there is. I would be surprised if there's a massive aero gain 
over yeah. comfort. I don't know who it is. The narrow, for racing narrow handlebars, I can understand because you've got to squeeze through gaps which you know are tight. But if you're riding around around the lanes, just get a handlebar that fits you properly. Yeah. You know, because it's just going to reduce neck pain, any any sort of discomfort which you can get from wide handlebars or even maybe narrow handlebars. So. Okay. Well, that's a lot of bike fit stuff discussed, but the technology involved with bike fits has evolved a lot over time. We're seeing all sorts of high-tech systems now. We've got cameras, lasers. Yeah. I mean, we love lasers, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, but before all this stuff, how would people do bike fits? Just a tape measure and a bit of string? Um, yeah, basically a plumb blob yeah. uh, or plumb line, however we call it these days, yeah. or um, an agomiometer, really. A, a Just what? Goniometer. What on earth are those? Do you know what that is? I'm not a clue. No. Yeah, basically, it's just like this measuring device. Thing. Oh, <laughs> to do angles? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that makes Yeah, it's sense. probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's the thing that extends out and it's got a pivot in the middle. That's you it. Should have bought with me. Oh, <laughs> you should have done. You should have come prepared. Right. But what, so what other stuff is there that's being used at the moment in terms of, you know, the, the latest bits of technology, like the camera systems and yeah. stuff like that? How's that? So work? there's camera systems which pick up on LED sensors, on um, reflective. Um, Little elements these yeah, yeah 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 I'm trying to think of the right word for that but yeah elements that stick onto the, into the body which I mean they're great they can track both sides of the body and you can see both things happening at the same time or with certain things or you can monitor them both at the same time the thing is you shouldn't just screen watch I never ever look at a bike fit and go right let's just let's just uh, look at the screen and go right that's done that's perfect everything's green or everything's balanced everything's even because you've got to look at the rider, you've got to look at what their body can handle, what their body position is like on the bike. If they're not sitting on the saddle properly, but their knee extension is correct, it's like, well, mm. you're still not correct, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, or deemed as correct, you know. So I guess it's finding, like say, a balance between using yeah. the technology that's available yeah. and what, I don't know, a bit of science and technology says is right, yeah. as to what you can see from your experience and knowledge and the feedback from the rider as well. Oh, 100%. Like combining it all in together. Yeah, because I use technology, I have it in both both my studios, but it's it's um, sometimes you go so off piece from what the technology is trying to tell you because of what I've already found out about the rider, you know, and you sort of think, well, that's kind of not irrelevant because you can see balances still, mm. um, but it's kind of irrelevant to if someone's got extremely tight hamstrings, for example, you know, they're going to have a lower... Knee, uh, knee extension than, than other people, you know. So that's there's no right white way of looking at it. So okay, yeah. Okay, so one of the most important factors of a bike fit is understanding the body of yeah. each and every rider, um, understanding what their limitations are, their postural imbalances, uh, areas of maybe some weakness. If they've got one one hamstring excessively tied to than the other, you know, we we have to take that into account because we're not just fitting on on one side of the body, we fit in both sides. Is that something you see quite often, people with different, different oh, yeah. left and right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, he sees mild leg depth differences, you see where people sit in a desk chair all day long, or maybe they drive a lorry and they're in the clutch all day, or, you know, that sort of, all those little things which will cause imbalances in the body. Okay. Prosthetics. So there's, um, lot, there's a lot of stuff to take into account for, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good three hour session. That wow. I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I found that pretty interesting. Yeah. Have you found it interesting on it? Yeah, I think. Well, I'm, what I'm interested to find out is, is we'll have a poll, but oh, I just want to yeah. know what what proportion of the viewers have had a bike here and, and haven't. Yeah. It's quite interesting to know. So, yeah, simply vote yes or no. Have you had? Um, a bike fit at all. Oh, if you want to let the answers to the quack question, um, head over to the GCN app, vote on our poll. We'll discuss that next week, shall we? Yeah. It's now time for Hot and Spicy Tech. Oh, thanks, Jake. Yeah. Uh, well, first up this week, we've got some new shorts from Castelli. So this is the new Free Aero Race RC short, which is an update, an improved version of the Free Aero short that we have. An improvement over the ones we've got. I know. Um, so it's been used by Quick Step Alpha Vinyl yeah. throughout the classics, including at Milan uh, San Remo. Yeah. But it's, it's got a number of like really sort of cool updates and improvements over the previous short. So the first thing is that the number of panels they're using to make it. Ours have 10 panels. Yeah. The new ones, five. Five less panels. Yeah. So there used to be this thing. It was a bit weird where back in the day, like the more panels a set of bib shorts had, like if you're going back, I don't know, 20 years, yeah. the more panels a set of bib shorts had, like the more expensive they were. They were like the, the premium ones. Yeah. Whereas now, there's this thing of like the fewer panels, 
the better. So some people are like, oh, how, what, what's going on there? It's like reverse psychology. Yeah, but it's the, um, it's the, it's the fabric, well, the fabrics that are being used are, yeah. have advanced, but also the ways of cutting and tailoring those fabrics have advanced. So you can actually still have a form-fitting, uh, very tailored short, yeah. but with better manufacturing, you now use fewer panels. So that's more comfort, less seams. Yeah, I guess that's an important point to consider because comfort is key with bib shorts, less panels should be better. There's yeah. also an update to the straps on these bib shorts, isn't there? Yeah, so they're now they're, they're like really sort of flat straps that are nice and wide, yeah. um, but they're vented as well. So there's, there's like little mesh holes in them Ooh. so that you, you know, you, you, you've got more ventilation, not getting too sweaty. But then the yoke on the back of the short, yeah. they've made that thinner as well because you sweat a lot on your back. Yeah. So they've just tried to make them cooler. It's lots of like little tweaks, but it's cool to see the evolution of shorts. Like you yeah. forget how far they've come when you look at like the first shorts we used back in like 1977, like Castelli shorts in Milan San Remo. Yeah, Castelli say that's the first use of a bib short, I think, 1977. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. And the free aero race short's been around a while as well, because here's Dan Lloyd in the Svelo test team using them. <laughs> that's got to be at least 100 years ago. Notice that Dan's not on the front either. <laughs> um, there's also an update yeah. to the gripper on the short as well. So there isn't a stitched in grip around the leg. It's now incorporated in with the material. Yeah, it? so you don't get sausage legs. Yeah, I easily get that these days. Cool. What, what's, what have we got next? Uh, next up, we've got a fancy new bike that Sebastian Vettel has. It's from a company called Just Ride It. Oh, I like this. I've seen, I've seen this. Yeah, really cool these are. So this company seemed to do Vettel uh, a custom fixie bike, like one a year. And it was actually you that spotted this, wasn't it, a mm. while back? He pretty much just rides up to the circuit for, for the races. Yes, yeah, so he rode to the Melbourne Grand Prix yeah. on, on the bike, which is really cool compared to like, all the other drivers who just turn up in supercars yeah he just rides there it's what pretty cool i'm yeah. just looking at some of the pictures of it now it's so cool so it's called the, i think it's called the pride bike it's got that kind of design across it with all the the flowing colors interestingly it's got a wooden handlebar yeah i like it it's just a fixie though it's just cool it is cool and uh, like you see a lot of uh, formula one drivers have bikes and a lot of bike companies chuck bikes yeah. at them because they use them for well track walks as well, don't they? Well, track rides, track when, rides. when they're like checking yeah. out the checking out the track, but like the recon. But um, a lot of the time, you'll they'll get like I don't know, like a really amazing fancy like ten grand super bike, and um, they'll just put like flat pedals on it, and like yeah. have a they'll have like the dork disc on it, and it's just out of the box, and it's like a ten grand bike, but it's just not cool. It's not cool. Whereas that's cool. Um, do you think Formula One drivers need a bike fit, Jake? Yeah, definitely. Okay, right. Yeah, cool. Hit me up. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit me up. <laughs> and some some Roubaix tech. It was last week now, but uh, as mentioned, DSM didn't use the inflation yeah. device. Bit disappointed by that, to be honest. Oh, very deflated by that. Oh. Mm. But um, there was a new Trek Domani on on display. Both the men's and women's teams used that. Elisa Longo Borghini won using yeah. the new Trek Domani, which is pretty cool. It doesn't look like it's got an ISO speed suspension decoupler thing at the front anymore which is quite intriguing but yeah. details remain sparse on it we've not heard anything official from from trek about this bike yet so i guess stay tuned that's the little they, yellow flashes on it yeah, yeah they were both both men's and women's were using one by though which is quite interesting. Mm, yeah, interesting um other big thing from roubaix punches oh loads of bloody punches mm. poor poor people i mean so sorry for uh, punches everywhere which yeah. was something that a, a lot of people have attributed to the widespread use this year of tubeless tyres. Yeah. However... Well, lots of people use the tubeless still. Yeah, yeah. But, well, yeah, but that's it. So you look at Jumbo Visma, plagued yeah. with punctures. There was Christophe Laporte's horrible puncture, and Wout van Aert had like three or something. I saw online that... Um, and they were using they were using Dugast uh, Vittoria tubulars. I also saw that Wout had that sort of silicon on the edge of his tyres again. They did it across on those Dugast, because I could see when I was watching the race, live on GCN Plus, they were super shiny on the sides. That must be to make them aero then. Maybe, that yeah. That must be an aero upgrade. Yeah. That, I also yeah. read online that Wout van Aert used four separate bikes across the race of Paris Bay where he changed so many times. That's crazy. Yeah. I think like the, the thing is, is that, that while the tubeless technology might not be perfect at the moment for Roubaix, it was the fastest ever edition of Roubaix. That's and a good point. And you can probably attribute some of that to the lower res rolling resistance of tubeless. It's something that actually I was discussing with you earlier before uh, we started the tech show is that, like we were saying, fastest ever episode, or um, edition, sorry, of Roubaix episode on telly. Um, but I think lots of teams are using 
their usual race equipment, so they're mm. not using some more robust stuff. So then I think that's helped them to go faster. Also, yeah. partly why maybe they're seeing a few more punctures. Maybe, yeah. All right, more hot tech next week. It's now time for the best bike shop in the world this week. Come to us. Oh, thanks, Jake. It's the part of the show where you get to champion your local bike shop that's done you a solid because, well, bike shops are brilliant and we should chat about them. And if you want to submit your local bike shop, then you submit in the app, go to the other section in the GCN app, and then make sure you put hashtag bike shop. That way we can find your submission. Yeah. I'm what, searching around from for ages. Otherwise. What is the best bike shop? In right, the, world the best. So this week we've got two for the prize of one. Two. Someone has sneaked two in one submission. I mean, I like their ingenuity there. And this is from Richard W. They say they'd like to thank two local bike shops who have gone to great lengths to provide amazing service. Mm. Bike shop number one, Northern Ride in Moulton, Yorkshire. They secured a new frame for them when their old one was written off in a crash, and they say it was better than the one they ordered too. Lovely place, Moulton. You know well, do you? Lovely place, yeah. Near, okay. near Pickering. Um, right. so, near Pickering. They say they've got a fab shop full of amazing bikes and friendly staff. And then bike shop number two is the Bicycle Lounge in Ormskirk. Ormskirk, Lancashire. Lancashire. Yeah. So they say Matt and his staff have been um, the source of great bike support, assistance and servicing for the past five years. Always helpful and friendly. They sourced a new group set and we carrying out the build on their new bikes. So thanks again to both shops. Well, what wow. do you make of the pictures of these places? Let's have a look. So Northern Ride, have you got this as well, Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounds like a great customer. A great customer. Yeah. Maybe he might hit you up for a bike fit. <laughs> um, okay, it looks very Northern outside, that's for sure. Inside, <laughs> clean, different. fresh, nice lighting. I'm amazed at the, uh, all, all the, how the people outside? matchy matchy all the, kit, all the kit is on those people at the bicycle lounge. How did, um, did they all organise this photo just for the bike um, bike shop of the world submission? Oh, I'm not sure. There's a lot of. I hope they have. I hope they have. Yeah, that's good effort. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the setup on the wall. I like the, the you know the slatted wall finish. It's nice. Get all the stuff on display. Real bike shop vibe. Not that too is. cluttered either. Yeah, I like that. Also, 0% at the back. It, what is that? 0%. Finance, probably. Zoom right in. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to zoom in. Zoom in. Not percent. I think it says not percent finance on bikes. Which? How do you, how do you zoom in? I'm zooming into a thousand percent. In fact, it's going to be very pixelated. No, I can only go to two hundred. Well, we just we just assume. Yeah. See that on 0% discount. 0% percent discount. 0% yeah. percent discount. All yeah. bikes. Yeah. Jake thinks it's 0% percent discount. I'm probably going to hope there's 0% percent finance in yeah. the interest of everybody. Well, that's the best move. And actually, if you want to support your local bike shop, don't hag them down for a discount, or you just put them out of business. Mm. Um, okay. Anyway, that's the best bike shop or two bike shops in the world this week. It's time for the bike vault, yeah. but we're going to do a bike vault bike fit special. Oh, this sounds incredible. So we're going to use Jake. To, to rate the fit. And we're going to entrust him <laughs> the with the bell. Of the bikes. We're going to judge them purely on fit. First up, though. Well, first up. The most super from... nice bike from last week is this beautiful Pinarello F outside the cathedral in Parma. Well, it looks great. A place I've, I've been and, and stood. That is fantastic, isn't it? In Mallorca. Well, what do we make of this, then? So this was the most super nice one from last week. Jake, rate the, rate the, rate from, the from bike, a bike fit. fitting perspective. Is it nice or super nice? It's nice. Just nice. Nice. It's good. It's I mean, the bike's lovely. Yeah. yeah. I love the bike. We, just from a bike fitting from the fit perspective. Bike, I'm just worried that it's got a slam stem. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. And on the general, not too many people can ride a slam stem. Okay. And you're guessing that RM Turner, who sounds, submitted this, you think he's not a pro? I reckon he sounds like he could probably ride a slam stem, to be fair, though. Ah, oh. all right. With the name Turner, right? Well, it's just a nice, all right. Um, so before we move on to the this week's submission, sorry, excuse me, you're going to be, in, I'm going to trust you with the bell, right? I'm not sure if you're familiar with how this works. Hand on the top, shake it side to side, only if we think the bike is a super nice. Okay. Okay? And there's a special third category which we've introduced, which is a bell drop. Um, that's which, if it's off the charts. That's if it's, it's like blown your mind. If it's okay. off the charts. Yeah, if it's off the charts, you can just chuck it to the floor. Um, so we're going to start, next one down Nine grains. Nine grains. With his Scott foil. It's very yeah. black and, and mm. nice. Um, oh, I like it. Another stealthy. slam stem. 12 speed. 
Yeah. Oh wow. He's, Altegra. He's a baller, isn't he? We've seen loads of Altegra. His first ride, speed group first ride out with his new power meter. Apparently, what what do you make of that from a bike fit perspective? From a bike fit. I mean, it looks like the saddle is angled down a bit. Yeah. Not that I'm the expert. Jake, you're the expert. I'm going to go nice again. Right. Probably can work for him. Yeah. I'm just worried that he's going to be falling forward on those, on those hands. Yeah. A yeah. lot of pressure. Maybe being a bit too picky, but hey. Just a nice. I'm just a nice. Yeah, a nice from Jake. Nice. Wow. Well, what are we judging it for? Normal bike vault. Pff, jaunty angle. Nice. Jaunty angle. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Jaunty. Next arm is right foot radio. radio. Mm. Interesting username. We're Merida. Silex, Silex gravel build. What is this? I've never seen one of these. Well, I like the colour of it, that's for sure. Yeah. What yeah. do you rate of that? That's pretty cool. It's a nice Got clean a photo. Little... Got to love a gravel build. Surely there's not much risk of their weight going yeah. too far forwards on this. From a bike fit perspective, I'm going to say super nice, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. You're going for it, go on. Oh, oh. Super nice. Yeah. From a bike fit perspective, you think that's good for a gravel bike? I think it's good for a gravel bike. You know, it looks like it's got some flared bars on there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which hopefully would mean they're not too wide on the hoods. Oh, okay, yeah, I like that. So, you know, yeah. there's a lot going on for this one. I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, he's, yeah. he's aligned everything. I, I think it's a super nice as well. Yeah, we'll super nice it. Uh, next up, we've got Im Imittendorf with a Trek, Mal uh, Trek Amonda SLR7 with like gold leaf on gold it. Gold leaf throughout. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to drop. You go with it. Go on. Just a bell drop. <laughs> Just a bell drop. Uh, so you, you're the guest. I'll pick it up. He's lined case. up his tyres. It's big, he's small, it's all clean. It's, I mean, that is. Yeah. That is super nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to super nice. Yeah, easy. Right. Easy. Next up, we've got Thomas.Mayer09, the ninth Thomas Mayer, uh, with a specialised E5 aluminium S Works. Nice. 2004, Ooh. this is from. Classic. Yeah, it is classic, isn't it? Can you remember when this. I tell you what, shadow stand. Mm. Oh, it is a shadow stand, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's using a shadow stand to prop it up. Fair um, one. I think we should give that automatic super nice. Yeah. If you want. If you want automatic super nice, just submit your bike into the bike vault <laughs> yeah. using the shadow stand available at shop.globalcycling network. Yeah, boom. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with a classic. What yeah. do you think to his bike fit though, Jake? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. good, I like it, yeah. You like that? Yeah, it looks You're like super it's got nice a decent... super nice bike fit? Yeah, I've, go on. I've oh. done it. Yeah. Yeah. getting carried away on myself. Yeah, man. good grip angle, saddle angle, saddle height, yeah, looks all right. Fair oh, one. Slightly disappointed that the rear wheel has got a silver rim and the black one's front, um, the front rim is black, but we'll let that slide. Well, those casino rims are probably about 12 years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bike's from 2004. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I'll let it's that It's a classic. Uh, yeah. Beirut Cyclist is next with his Enigma Esprit. Ooh. Oh, this is incredible. It, what, but from a bike vault, pers uh, from a bike fit perspective, what are we saying, Jake? From a bike fit vault. I'm going to go nice. Nice. Just nice. Why? Yeah, yeah. Just look at the uh, the drops, you know, possibly not going to be the best connection. There's not much area the on the yeah. drop, is there, for you to sit on? You know, those uh, hoods maybe a little bit small, a little bit lumpy. It's not I much seat post going on. It looks maybe like the bike is possibly a little bit too big. Right. But then it could be the style of the frame. Yeah, I'm going to go nice. You're, going, you're playing it safe on a nice. I'm going, right. I'm going, I'm going nice, what yeah. are we going? I think it looks incredible. It looks incredible, don't, gonna, get me, uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I think I'll go super nice on that yeah, one. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Alex Burgess is next with a Van Nicholas uh, Ventus SE. Um, quite a few accessories on this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're going to have to score him down for not removing the accessories. There's which... a lot of appendages. Yeah. From a, from a bike fit perspective. Can you even see that to assess it? Yeah. I mean, it's quite... It looks like he's, he's travelling long distances. Oh, you'd I hope he's travelling yeah. long distances. He's hoping he's not going down the shop. It's a bit overkill for the cafe, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go nice. It actually looks okay. He's, oh, actually, no, no, no. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm not. What not have you fan. seen? The saddle yeah, angle. What's, what's what have you seen? You're saddle, saddle, saddle angles on, on the on the nose down. Yeah. And his handlebar is quite high, so I feel like his back is gonna get quite a bit of abuse on that. Okay, oh, just a nice yeah. from you, is it? Yeah. And um, it's just a nice from me as well. Yeah, I think a nice. Uh, it's, also it's the, it's the handle. The, in the, there. The, the, yeah, the helmet on the floor is. Yeah. You have a bit more respect for that. Yeah. Yeah. A bit more respect. That right. was the last bike vault submission for this week. Mm. It's a shame the bike vault's over. I wish it never ended. I really do. Yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks so much for Jake Arrington for joining us and, Thank you. and telling us uh, yeah. uh, his bike fit wisdom. It's been great. And uh, just a quick reminder, we've got the Global Bike Festival coming up. Oh, yeah. And you've got a good discount code for everyone. If you want 25% off, just go buy your tickets and put in the discount code OLLI25. Don't tell the other presenters. Um, 
yeah, you get a discount. Don't tell anybody. My cheeky else. discount. Or just tell your friends only. Jay, you can probably use it if you want to yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next week, I guess. Oh, before we go, we're going to do a tech clinic special with Jake. So we've oh, got cool. everyone's questions and we're going to shoot that straight after the show. Oh, nice. Yeah.